one thing I know is when my God arrives, no matter how dead your situation, no matter how dead the condition, you may be four days in a grave. Now, when Jesus arrives, he's never late. He's on time. And your answer is on time. I want you to tell him, I don't mind waiting for you. Because whatever is dead, he's resurrected today. Whatever was on standby, it's catching a fire that is of speed. I've never known. I'm moving forward. I don't mind waiting on you, God. You are an awesome God. You are a worthy God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let that wait upon you. It shall mount up with wings and eagles. They shall run. They shall never grow weary. Them that wait upon you, Father, they are like Mount Sion. They are never shaken, they are never moved. Them that trust upon the Lord, they renew their strength. The people that know their God wait upon Him. No matter the situation, no matter the tribe, no matter the pain. Father, may I be that someone that is going to wait on you. Because I know my answer is you. I know you shall answer me. I know you shall answer me. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say, Lord, I'm waiting. Lord, I'm waiting. Jesus. You may take your beautiful miracle seat. I want you to look up, even as you are taking that seat, and ask God, Father, where are the stars? Ask him, look up and say, where is the star? Where are my stars? Lord, where is the star? Amen. Amen. I titled my message today, Lord, where are the stars? Hallelujah. Yeah. I titled the message today, so, Lord, where are the stars? Amen. Amen. Lord, where are the stars? Am I talking to somebody? Amen. I want to take you back to the book of Genesis. And I want to speak to you about a season of waiting that came upon a man called Abraham. Abraham, when he met and encountered God in the book of Genesis chapter 12, God spoke to him and said he will bless anything that he touched. He will bless him beyond measure. He will number him amongst the blessed. He will fight anybody that is going to fight him. This was God's covenant with Abraham from the book of Genesis chapter 12. I want to read it to you from verse 1 to 3. It says, now the Lord had said to Abraham, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. Somebody say, God, make me a great nation. God, make me a great nation. I will bless you. Wow. <laughs> and I will make you a name, your name so great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse those who will curse you. Amen. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Amen. Amen. Wow. It means that through Abraham, if you are Abraham's child, through Abraham, you have the blessings that the Lord spoke about. Anyone who is supposed to fight you, anyone who is supposed to curse you, is going to be cursed by this God. Because this is a covenant that God gave Abraham. And I see Abraham in this young age celebrating and saying, wow! There is no blessed man like me. No one is like me. No one is as blessed as Abraham. I will be a great name. I will be a great nation. I will be known all over the world. Who can contend with such a man? That is me, Abraham. Blessed am I amongst the people. Hmm. Little did he know he had to wait 90 years before that could be fulfilled. Amen. Somewhere along the way, he 
he spoke to him again, fulfilling this very statement that I'm going to give you stars. Hmm. Am I talking to somebody? Genesis chapter 15. The Lord appears to Abraham. Wow. And in verse 5, the Lord speaks and says, Then he brought him out, and he said, Look now towards the heavens, and count the stars. Hey, this God is God of promises. Count ye the stars. If you are able to number them, and he said to him, so shall your generations be. Mm. <laughs> and he believed in the Lord, and he accounted it unto him as righteousness. Am I talking to somebody? Yeah. Abraham now is promised stars. And every time this torments Abraham, he comes out by night, he looks up. And he looks at his congregation, he looks at his people, he looks at his wives, and he has no children. And God says, as the stars are, so shall your children be. Amen. Amen. I believe Abraham thought every year he would be bringing forth children. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. Abraham believed from this month, Narata Bukfiala, January, Narakwata Ka January. And next year, February. The other year, I'll be producing them like I don't know. Because God has said they will be as numerous as the stars. Now, this man, 90 years down the line, he stopped somewhere and he said, Baba, where are the stars? Am I talking to somebody? Amen. How many of you, God has promised you? God has prophesied, God has spoken, and you can testify with Abraham and stop somewhere and say, God, where are the stars? Amen. Amen. And I hear God telling Abraham, don't worry, you will laugh again. Amen. He was crying out in that anger, Papa, where are the stars? What has this become of me? What is going on, my father? You promised me. I heard you well. You said you bless me. You said you make me a nation. You said families will be blessed in me. I don't have a child. Where are the stars? You are looking for a child. You are looking for this one person to proceed you. And there is nothing coming forth. And you are asking God, where is the star? My father, my father. Is it that I'm not praying enough? Is it that Abraham didn't pray enough? Is it that Abraham didn't fast long enough? Mm. I'm telling somebody listening to me today. If there was a formula called bypass of tribulation, I wouldn't sell it to anybody. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. If there was ever a formula that was produced called bypass for trouble, hmm, I think it would sell like I don't know. Amen. Am I talking to someone? Amen. If there was that formula or there was a remedy or you could go to a pharmacy and you find a tablet called bypass of medi medication called bypass of trouble, hmm, you buy it today. Amen. You wouldn't care how much it could cost you. You buy it because everybody wants trouble bypass. Amen. How Abraham would have wished he knew from the onset that he would wait 90 years to get his blessing. Amen. Amen. These are seasons when somebody begins to wonder, God, do you hear me? God, is there something wrong with me? Amen. Our troubles create a capacity for us to handle life. Amen? Our problems, they create for us the capacity to survive. That is why if I were to discover a bypass trouble, a, a trouble bypass somewhere, I will destroy it myself. Because this earth will begin to produce weaklings that can never survive in the midst of tribulation. Amen. Amen. And God knew that he needed to make us a little bit stronger. 
Am I talking to somebody? Amen. This God now turns his formula and he begins to speak to Sarah. And he says, Sarah, you shall laugh. I'll give you a child. And Sarah says, ah, God, that is good. She begins to prepare herself for her delivery. You are preparing. Three months have gone by. I have not seen my peace. I know my baby is coming. In the fourth month, you are bleeding. My God. And you say, God, what is this now? Where are my stars? Now I have a child. Am I talking to somebody? Who I will, what, what will I tell him? What, how will, what will I say? You are even trying to hide what is happening on your body. So you are trying to find a way not to sleep on the same bed because you don't know what to tell. The guy you told three months ago, I'm pregnant. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sarah went through that one. Meanwhile, when she's explaining to, Sarah, to Abraham to say, I think I'm not enough to balance her. Hagar in the other tent is saying, I'm not Am I talking to somebody? Hagar produces a child. Sarah has goes by and says, what is this? I'm talking about life experiences that a woman go through, that people go through every day of our lives. And she stopped there and she says, what is this? What am I going through? And God says, don't worry, you will laugh again. Imagine you are going through such a situation and God says, you will laugh again. God says, God. And Sarah says, hmm, we run the indica. I am growing older. It is for this reason that when the three visitors visited Abraham and said, where is your wife Sarah? This time next year, she shall give forth her child. Sarah stopped and said, hmm. <laughs> She laughed. She said, eh, I have heard that one before. Let them keep it to themselves. I've waited. I'm in menopause. I've forgotten about it. Where are my stars? I've waited. God took me out and said, number the stars. Number the jobs. Some of you have had great dreams that you become great men, great women. But when you look at your life today, you are short of words. And all you want to do is stop, look up and say, God, where are my stars? Let not in Abraham know that the stars that God was talking about would become stars of his marriage. Amen. Amen. One day I believe Abraham must have gone to God and said, God, I don't see stars. I'm seeing scars. Everything about my marriage is scars. Everywhere I turn to, I see scars. When I look at my wife Sarah, scars. Where are the stars? talking to someone because life can give us scars and we begin to begin to believe in the scar every time that Sarah walked out of the house the scar called Ishmael would bypass her and she said God scars not stars I didn't hear you well I hate scars but do you Ishmael me scar I'm talking to someone Ah, if I'm talking to someone, say, Father, my scars must disappear. Father, my, scars. my scars must disappear. My scars must disappear. This woman, she's believing God for stars. And she sees scars in her life. And God says, don't worry, you will laugh again. Mm. All I'm seeing are scars. And you're telling me I'll laugh again. I'm here to tell somebody. No matter the scars of your life, no matter what darkness you have gone through, no matter the period you have waited, one thing you should be sure of is that the stars that God has promised you, they are coming your way. Amen. Am I talking to someone? Amen. One day, she discovers she's pregnant again. Amen. I want you to understand. Women go through these things. Families go through these things. Amen. You get married, you are believing God. 
for a star. Down the line, the stars are not there. What you have are scars. And the scars pile up. And the scars seem never to end. And the scars seem to take up more space than where are you going to hand these so-called stars? What Abraham thought was that his children would become like trophies. He hung them everywhere so everybody could see his stars. But what he was amassing in his marriage was nothing but scars. Some of us, our tribulation in life is not what God promised us. What we are seeing today is nothing but scars. What we experience today is nothing but insult. What we go through every day is nothing but pain. And we begin to stop and say, where is my star? Lord, you promise. But do we stop waiting on this God? Amen. Amen. In time, Sarah was laughing because she had her Isaac. There was Isaac in her hand and she was laughing again. Do you know what Sarah could have done? <laughs> do you know what Sarah did? When she gave birth to that child, she bring forth Abraham and Isaac in her hands, and she must have gone to, to the woman, Hagar, and said, ha, I told you, I'll laugh again. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, her, I told you, I'll laugh again. Yeah. Remember, you can imagine, I want you to, for a minute to think about Hagar. Every day she's passing, I said, I tell you, go. And Sarah was carrying in her old age. I don't know what happened here. And Sarah every day keeps telling Haga, I'll laugh. Wait. I'm coming. I'll laugh. Amen. And she said, have you ever been in a place where somebody keeps telling you it will not happen, it will not work, it will not materialize, you are wasting time, you are just putting in nothing here, and you draw out nothing, you are wasting your time, there is no way you are going, Sarah had it all, and she kept on saying, I will laugh again, and you can imagine when she brought forth this little baby, Isaac in her hands, there was no greater name she could think of but laughter. She said, I told that fool, Haga, I'll laugh again. Are you going to tell that devil today? Ha, I'll laugh again. I told you, I'm telling you again. I'll laugh again. Amen. I'm talking to somebody. Amen. You need to confront the enemy sometimes. Amen. You know, sometimes we tend to take our troubles as our worst enemies. <laughs> After she gave birth to Isaac, Isaac becomes a grown man. And Isaac thinks life will be easy for him. He doesn't realize something is ahead of him. He grows up as a tender young man and he takes a wife at the age of 40. And he says, this is the woman in whom I'm well pleased. Rebecca, come, we make a family. And from the day that he marries Rebecca, he tells her, I come from a blessed home. Amen. My father built altars. Amen. My father is a friend of God. Amen. My father is the most blessed man in the area. Amen. There is no greater guy than my daddy. That's this family we should have You know we are not used. Amen. He tells the woman all manner of issue. And she comes and she says, hey, now we got Hey. Year one, no child. Year two, no child. Year three, no child. Nineteen years, Rebecca is still looking. Where is the child? Who is that? He said all that coming in his hands are blessed. He says everybody in his family are blessed. He says his father can never give birth to something that cannot give birth. Why? What are we doing? Nineteen years, scars begin to appear in Isaac's life. Amen. Amen. The Bible says. Isaac became friends with his trouble. I want you to become a friend to your trouble. Amen. Because the troubles in life that stick around longer than you expect, the troubles in Abraham's life stuck around him for 90 years. He had to get used to seeing them and he had to befriend them and begin to engage. 
engage them. I begin to ask them, you stars, you are in that place for a reason. You are a trouble to me. I'm waiting for you to come down and be a material thing. But all I see are stars. But I'm talking to you. One day, I'll laugh again. Amen. I'm talking to Santa. Amen. There's some troubles that will come in your life. They will not disappear anyhow. If you don't appear to be a friend to them and begin to engage them, begin to have a conversation with your troubles, they begin to become your weakest point. Amen. Amen. Until your trouble becomes your friend, you begin to talk to your problem and say, aha, uh -huh, okay, you think you are my trouble. I've been sick for a long time. One day, you will not be here. It's okay. But tomorrow, you will not be here. You can tell that trouble. I've been unemployed. I've been unemployed. I've been paying my salaries. I've been paying my salaries. What do you call them? Application letters. You keep posting and nobody replies. You keep posting. And your friends say, oh, I'm moving jobs. I don't like it. And you know when you're unemployed, it's painful. You find a kamundu. <laughs> you find this kamundu who has a job and says, I don't like this job. I'm moving and I'm, I'm shifting out of this job. I'm going to start there. <laughs> now to my application later, 100. You know what I'm saying? And this person is playing with the job. You go to an office and she's sitting there. Hello, uh, what can we do for you? <laughs> and then you are saying, <laughs> You know, are And you look up and say, God, where are my stars? Look at this one. They don't even deserve this job, but they are smiling. And all I know is a life of stars. When will I laugh again? I'm talking to someone. Amen. And Rebecca begins to taunt her husband. What is this? When you came to me, you said everybody in your family is blessed. Everyone that comes out of you is blessed. <laughs> Turn with me to the book of Genesis 26, 25. I'll show you something. Wow. She begins to cry out and say, uh-uh. Amen. Amen. I'm supposed to enjoy my life. I'm supposed to enjoy this marriage. Amen. And the Bible says in verse 20, Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah as a wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian, of Padan Aram, the sister of Laban, the Syrian. Now, when you jump, you go to verse 26 there. It says, afterward, his brother came out and his hand took a hold of Esau's heel. So his name was called Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore him these children. It means they waited how long? 19 years. He was 40 when he married. He was 60 years <laughs> when he was being given his blessing. A promise that God had given him for many, many years. And the Bible tells me something in these scriptures. When we go back again, the Bible says, Isaac entreated God concerning his wife. Amen. Verse 21. Now Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord granted his plea, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. Amen. Now, the Bible seems so brief there, when it says that he asked God to bless his wife, to open her womb, and it looks like it was just pam, boom. That is what we read, and that is what we believe. Am I talking to someone? Amen. When you read it like that, you think he just went in the presence of God and said, excuse me, God. Rebecca and Chusha son and Ben Koman. And he came out and the following day 
Rebecca was con who had conceived. Amen. Is that what you think happened? Ask your neighbor, is that what you think happened? Is that what happens? Even you, when you come before God, you tell him, God, I need a job. Or you come before a man or woman of God, I need something. And then they say, receive it. And then you say, I receive. <laughs> I'll tell you something. There are 24 hour miracles. But there are miracles that God will cook for you for a long time. And I'll tell you why God is going to cook that miracle for you for a long time. Because you are not an ordinary person. And every ordinary person, God will give their miracle 24 hours. Just know that there is nothing there. Anything that you are going to struggle, not going to struggle with, you should know it's not a permanent glory. Any road that does not have an obstacle or have has any stumbling block is probably leading you nowhere. Am I talking to someone? Amen. It's leading you nowhere. Anywhere where God is going to place something, the bigger the cross, the bigger the crown. Amen. The bigger the battle, the greater the fall. Amen. The bigger your weight, the greater the glory. Amen. This is how God is. Amen. So you may be saying, but why? I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, I'm not like you. I'm not like you. I'm special. I am a peculiar person. I am not a commoner. My God has to break it well well. My God has to break it well well. The Japanese have a theory. When they pick up old things and they want to mend them, they put short all the tents and they fill them up with gold. And they believe that when something has been through so, so much beating and so much ravage, it needs to glow, glitter, it needs to glow. So what they do is pack up all those dents on whatever is old, fill it up with gold and polish it so that you don't see the scars inside. Does it mean that that old thing doesn't have the scars? Uh-uh, it still has the scars. In the same way, God looks at you being beaten black and blue. He looks at you being tossed this way and that way. He knows you've got dents. I believe God is...